The ministry was suffering incalculable losses. Ethan couldn't buy a junior cheeseburger without being hit with a wave of regret and guilt over the $1 expenditure. Why was the ministry performing so poorly? All conditions considered, the ministry should be expanding. The world was in chaos. Recent ISIS attacks and recruiting efforts, as well as a local black protest caused by an unjustified police shooting, should result in a church fattened with the guilt and worry of concerned lost souls groping for an answer. This wasn't the case. Every Sunday, the church is populated with the same faces, either the elderly or the lonely. The devoted of this church are nothing more than mannequins with different faces. These people are just postures. Does the ministry need to update its message? Try to attract a young group? This seems like too high of a risk. New parishioners window shopping for an ideology aren't a guarantee for the long haul. And what if the mannequins leave? Then what? Consider the loss of the funeral service funds when they finally do collect their faithful reward. Is that gamble too high of a risk? Ethan prayed over the doomed church. He fret over it hourly. Is America doomed? Have the faithful for once and all turned their backs on belief and God? Was this truly a secular age? Has the Holy Spirit been replaced by yoga and Pilates? Nope. The answer was beneath Ethan's nose the entire time. The success and failure of his ministry depended wholly on the church's facilities. Other churches in town with a similar statement of faith were enjoying a bumper crop of newly converted souls. The difference between those churches and Ethan's was self-flushing toilets. People just prefer the luxury feeling of not flushing their own waste. Sadly, Ethan wouldn't ever reach this conclusion. The church loses its lease the following March 3rd, weeks before Easter services, and Ethan returns to editing shrink-wrap machine manuals for a major printing company.